Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. We've got some malicious compliance stories, so let's jump right into our first story of the day by Shazzy4. Don't appreciate me? No problem. So I used to work for this company in London that was basically an education center. Boss was a pretty nice lady, or so I thought, and would make me feel pretty good about the work I did, that is, until I started asking for more money and a higher title. In all fairness, I should have seen the red flags in the first week of work when I saw that there were only two other people apart from me working in the entire organization. Basically, I was taken on board as a junior administrator and did the work of a senior administrator, a receptionist, a recruiter, a manager, and also a tutor, all because my boss was too stingy and wouldn't pay others to do it because she figured I was good enough to do so. I would also sometimes be told to clean the office like with literal sponges. I needed the money and so I didn't complain, but it started getting to a point where I would be given work to take home and not get paid for it. I would also not get paid for months and would practically have to beg my boss to pay me my salary. She would call me into her office every 10 minutes and have unnecessary and hour-long rants about other people in the industry repeating the same things over and over and then complaining about how I wasn't meeting deadlines. She got extremely petty about the fact that I pointed out how long I was standing in her office and listening to her rants and that I could have been using that time more productively instead. I couldn't even go for lunch. She didn't like it when I asked if I could. It got to a point where I asked her if she could actually get someone to help me out and she kept bringing in apprentices who would spend 75% of their time on their phones and when any competent person would apply, she'd fire them within a week because she didn't want to pay them. So all the paperwork that they were supposed to complete within the week would be dumped on me. I then decided to start making my life easier by putting systems in place such as transferring databases to cloud so I could access from anywhere, putting forms online in word format so they could be filled, creating a portal to help students upload their work online instead of using paper. I managed the company 95% of the time as my boss would leave for hours for family time and I would then put on all these roles and complete all my tasks. It became too much for me. My partner got upset too because I spent so much time working and he said that it would be understandable if I were getting paid for it, but I wasn't. He was heck bent on making me leave and kept arguing with me because I was taking all this crap and still saying, I can't just leave, she needs me. I would constantly have breakdowns. I wouldn't eat all day so I lost so much weight. I would be working on projects during the earliest hours of the morning. I did feel really bad for her and decided I wouldn't leave for as long as she needs me and would help her out with overtime work just to ensure she was able to run the company efficiently. It actually worked out for a while until one day she spoke about salaries and told me she was going to give a higher rate to my coworker. She didn't mention anything about me and so I confronted her about an increase in my wages since I'd have been there for two years and had taken on multiple roles but was still getting paid as a junior administrator. For months, she led me on saying, I promise within the next few weeks we will discuss this. She avoided me whenever I brought it up after that. Her defense was that I was too young to have a higher title and a higher salary. I'm 21. That's when I was really furious. I left her high and dry with no notice when the business was struggling and she hadn't paid me for three months. She kept calling me to ask me to teach her how to use the systems I placed and that I need to come in to teach her new apprentice. Told her that I would happily do so if she paid me all my outstanding money, 700 in wages, the bonus money from the last year she owed me, 500, all the money she took from me for her personal expenses and promised to refund but didn't, 100, as well as pay me for the time I would use to teach her apprentice about the systems. She didn't respond after that, but I'm assuming that she's taken the hint. As for the systems, they're not the easiest to follow. She would have to call in an IT engineer to really understand how to use the platforms. Plus, they're password protected under my admin email that I deleted off the computers before I left. It would cost her more paying the IT guy to recover the account learn how to use the system and then teach it to my boss, who would have to teach it to an apprentice who probably wouldn't even understand. All in all, I would say I pretty much freaked her over and she still has my money, but she's gonna have to use it and probably more anyway to use those systems. She called me two days and I texted her, sorry, I'm at work, can I call you back later? No response. Yep, pretty pissed off. 
OP took way too much onto their shoulders for way too long. Let me ask you guys, at what stage in this process would be when you quit the job? Would it be relatively early when you realized that sometimes you had to clean the office with literal sponges despite you needing the money? Would it be her not even letting you go to lunch? Would it have been all the overtime you had to do? Or would you have held out until they started not paying you and left? Or would you have held out even longer than that? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Long Suffering Squid, Always Physical Work First. The Background I work in the operations department at my company. A lot of what we do involves data entry, taking the paperwork our customers send us and entering it into our computer system. For this reason, we are often called the order entry group. However, data entry isn't all we do. We're also one of the groups that deal with customer credit card info, compliance with federal regulations, and fulfillment of government contracts, among other sensitive subjects. The senior team members, such as yours truly, are often unofficially on a first name basis with some very important, very serious people who need you to solve their problems yesterday. To put a fine point on it, we only look like an entry level position. People who understand this give us our due respect, often because we can and have moved mountains for them. People who don't understand, who only see us as order entry, we really don't have the time to deal with them until one of them becomes our boss. The setup. At the time our story takes place, my group was processing between 1,000 to 2,000 orders a day. We're not a large group, only a dozen or so, and most of the submitted orders were still coming in on physical paperwork. Some of our orders had started coming in online, and as an experienced operator, I was put in charge of a small test queue to see if ordering online would be viable. These were real orders, but only about an hour of work a day, and I cleared them out handily. Another important note, there was always physical work on our shelves. We got a late shipment every night that was expected to be done first the following morning. Enter clueless supervisor, our new boss. Let's call her Portia. Portia is old school, but not in a good way. She is authoritarian and micromanages. She has never done our job and sees us as just order entry, and she doesn't hold with our newfangled online ordering system. Physically present work is king. She is actually a fairly pleasant person, but her word is law. Portia doesn't like it when we're doing things other than entering orders, things like the rest of our job. She doesn't like that I put the online orders first. I'm not, I'm treating them with the same priority as the other, real, physical work. She insists that the physical work must all be done before the online orders can be processed, but as you may recall from above, the physical work is never completely done. There is always more work to do. I try to argue with her, but she insists. So, the malicious compliance. I comply with her request, and the online work starts to pile up. One day turns into two, turns into one week. I have about five hours of work in a queue only I have access to and am actively monitoring because my previous boss trusted me to stay on top of it or report any problems. Keep in mind, this is real work for actual customers, not fake work designed to test the system. And since we're directly related to the medical field, we're not just impacting our customers, we're impacting their patients. That's bad. So a week goes by. I pass my previous manager, let's call her Daenerys, my former boss's boss, in the hall and I casually drop the bomb on her that the online work has been piling up for a week. Daenerys is the woman who is largely responsible for getting the online system I'm working on set up and for her efforts she was eventually promoted to director. She is one of those important, serious people I'm on a first name basis with, so I'm not really worried when she gives me a flat, menacing, what? I explain the situation. Daenerys isn't just important and serious. She helped build the group I'm in. She knows exactly what the operations department does. So Daenerys says, I'll take care of it. The aftermath. Daenerys pulls Portia into a meeting. I don't know what was said afterwards, but I was told to prioritize the online queue until I had it under control. And for the next month, Portia positively oozed anxious solicitude. She wanted to make very sure the online work got done. I only wish her change in attitude had lasted, but those are stories for another time. 
I mean, I think that's probably the right strategy to do. If somebody is completely mismanaging and there's somebody you can go to above that in the hierarchy and kind of, you know, just drop that subtle little investigational tidbit in there, that little crumb that leads them to the trail that leads them to the reality of the situation. That's all you really can do and hope for the best and it worked out in this situation. This next story is by Unicorn Space Station. Lady didn't do her math and asked for less money. I obliged. Yo, Big Mama is back with a third call center malicious compliance story, this time a bit shorter one. This conversation occurred after Lady, let's honor the tradition and call her Karen, sorry actual Karens of Reddit, after Karen called in the evening with all services down. We found a problem and scheduled a tech dispatch for morning two days later. Karen was rude throughout the interaction. So you're gonna give me my money back for the time without the service, right? We can certainly offer you some adjustment. I can credit your account with a $5 flat rate for each day without service, including today, and the day the issue is going to be resolved, so for three days that would be $15. Oh heck no, I pay a fortune for your service and a measly $5 per day ain't gonna cover it. Is this how you treat your loyal customers? Do you think this is fair? Shove your flat rate up your butt and give me back what I'm actually paying for your darn services. Well, I was fairly certain that she is not paying us $150 per month. Just very few customers do and I knew what services she had, so I was happy to oblige with a huge grin on my face. I'm sorry, Karen. Of course, if you prefer, I can calculate the exact amount for you. I'm pulling up the bill as we speak. Karen in a sarcastic tone. Yeah, great. Now you're finally doing what was supposed to happen in the first place. Good job. So Karen, I have your bill in front of me. I see here that you pay us $90 each month. If we divide that by 30 days, that's $3 per day, and the total adjustment would be $9. Would you like to go back? Was going to offer the original 15 but got cut off. Oh freak you, you smart butt piece of poop. Who do you think you are? How dare you? I'm going to speak to your supervisor. Well, it was a really busy evening, as most evenings are, and we waited around 20 minutes for some tier 2 supervisor to take over the call. For the entire duration of the wait, she refused to talk to me. Like I care, 20 minute break. Finally, I was next in queue for tier 2 and was assigned to a dear friend of mine who was known for being hella smart but also not taking customers crap. I gave him the customer and continued working. Later that day, I met my friend on a smoke break and he told me the rest of her story. Yeah, she was like an angel when she got to me. They often are to seem more credible like they are the victims. Told me you were rude, blah blah blah, and that you offered her 15 and then refused to give it to her. He of course knew what happened, we gave them the brief recap. So I told her that while agents can give flat rate adjustments to streamline the process, I, as a supervisor, need to adhere to the rules more strictly, and $9 is the fair and only adjustment I can offer. She said that's fine because she doesn't care about the money. She wanted to help us improve our customer service by kindly letting us know about a rude agent in our ranks. So yes, after more than half an hour on the phone with us, she walked away with $9 and we laughed about this one for a long time. It's definitely frustrating to deal with a service interruption. That said, if I ever call a customer service type deal, I try and be as respectful as possible. It might end up getting you a beneficial deal that they can give very rarely, or it just overall won't lead to a bad circumstance like this. Big Mama out. This next story is by Panama R3D, typical McD's compliance. I worked at a fast food giant for about 18 months in the mid 90s before I left and have quite a few good stories. Just wrapped up reading someone else's and it reminded me of this. So I'm working the assembly line during a closed shift. Yes, fast food wasn't open 24 7 back in the 90s. So I'm alone toasting buns and getting condiments on all orders while cleaning. Order comes in from the front with a grill slip, indicating a custom order. Quarter pound burger, only extra ketchup. The ketchup dispenser had a thumb lever for a normal amount, and one for a double. If I recall, some of the burgers came with the double shot of ketchup, but for this, didn't I think I dropped two double shots, which is what we're trained to do. Anyways, send it down the line after adding the burger, the top bun, and slip on top of the box. Big surprise, not enough ketchup. I was almost positive I was told by the cashier they wanted swimming. 
The kitchen was small, like they all are, so all four of us working, cashier, drive through grill and me, know what's going on and smile. So I must have given this burger 15 double squirts of ketchup. If you've ever had one of these sandwiches, you know how big the box is. It had to have been filled from the bottom with ketchup up to the top bun. Cashier brings it back up, guy opens the lid, smiles, walks away. No one loves ketchup that much. I feel like this guy was ordering this just to mess with the staff or something like, who orders a quarter pounder swimming in ketchup, literally swimming in ketchup, just drowning in it. That's unique. And our final story of the day is by a King 2006. My sister tells me to clear out space on the phone. I do just that. So for context, I let my sister use my phone, but she takes advantage of that and downloads a ton of games. She comes up to me and says, Hey me, could you possibly delete some things from our storage space? I say, stop downloading games. She then proceeds to tell our father and he does nothing. I say, wait, hold on a minute. I then delete every single game and app she downloaded. She was mad. She took the phone and tried to flush it. But here is the problem. It's waterproof. Afterwards, she got grounded for three months, got internet privileges taken away, except for schoolwork, and nothing else happened to me. Thanks for reading. Three months sounds like a lot, but honestly, depending on what phone it is, they might have paid four digit numbers for that phone. Plus the accessories, plus the charger, plus the case, whatever, you, all these accessories and whatnot. So I kind of understand, oh, you deleted some stuff on the phone and you tried to flush our thousand dollar phone down the toilet. You definitely ain't going to be using it for a while. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you enjoyed the stories today, please consider giving the video a like. And if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. And if you had a favorite story of the day, let me know which one and why in the comments down below. But no matter what you did, whether it was liking, commenting, subscribing, whatever you did, thank you all so very much for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, I'll be back tomorrow with more Reddit stories right here on the Storytime channel.